So I thought I would do a Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord series where we go over how you can command your army. Now starting out we're going to be going over specifically infantry and also archers and I'll be telling you how you can use them to beat literally anyone even armies twice your size and I'll also give you a few examples of this and talk you through those different battles. And we are doing this obviously on realistic difficulty everything's unrealistic and the combat AI difficulty is challenging. So I can show you that this is very much doable if you can command your army in a tactical way. I will be doing future videos about cavalry and mounted archer cavalry as well, but I kind of want to slowly increase the depth of this guide as we go on. So if you're interested in those future guides, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and press the bell icon and then YouTube will let you know when that future video comes out. But first off, starting out, let's just talk about the controls because there's probably a lot of beginners watching this who don't understand how mounted blade controls work when you're commanding your army. As you can see here, we have all of our infantry that's currently in our party. We can choose what formation number it's in. And then we can command this formation separately of other formations if we want to. So you guys can see my shield infantry is currently formation one. So whenever I press the number one key on my keyboard, I'm going to be commanding all of my shield infantry. And then here I have my archers and you can see they're on formation two. So I know that I can separately command my infantry and my archers. So as soon as you spawned onto the battlefield, you're going to want to look around for a mountain that is very steep and you can put your troops on. So this is a bit of a hill and I'll just use this as an example. But what we're then going to want to do is press Watch number off. two. As you can see, I now have my archers highlighted so I can command them to move around like so. If I also click in one spot, so like here for example, um, you can see the little flags of where they're all going to be standing. I'm going to want to drag this flag out to the right and then as you can see they're going to go into a long line. Now this tutorial will get more advanced as we go on so stay tuned. Make sure, but make sure guys, you always drag from left to right. Because if you drag from right to left, as you guys can see, they're all going to be facing the wrong direction. This is an issue when you have like a shield wall, for example, like with the infantry. With archers, they'll still turn around, but you're kind of making life really hard for them. So always drag from left to right, like so, by holding down your left click. The next thing you're going to want to do is put them in a formation. So currently you can see our archers are in a huddle. So we're going to select our archers by pressing number two. And then on the top left you can see if I press F3 I can then choose their formation. Currently they are in a line formation which is like the default formation of everyone. I would like my archers to be in loose formation all the time though. So at the start of every battle, I always press F3. So they go into that formation. Essentially, all we've done is we've pressed number two to select our archers. And then we've pressed F3, F3. And that's all we did. It was that simple. Now these archers are in loose formation. Every single person can see and shoot at the enemy. If they were in a tight formation, the people at the back wouldn't be shooting any arrows, which mean, you know, they would be useless. They wouldn't be doing any damage. So always make sure your archers are in a loose formation on top of a hill somewhere. And if you can see some people aren't shooting, you can just go ahead and right click and drag and you can spread your lines even thinner. So you have a super narrow line of archers and all these guys are going to be able to shoot the enemy. And if you just click now, you can move them all forward or you can move them all backwards like so. Uh, and that is essentially all we need to know about commanding our archers at the moment. The next thing you're going to want to do is position your archers around the middle of the hill. So enemies are going to have to charge up to meet them. Now currently our infantry are not doing anything. So now we're going to command them and we're going to tell them to come behind the archers like so, just in a long line like that. Now the reason we don't stand them in front of the archers is so especially if any cavalry charge us or infantry there's none of our own men are blocking the archers from firing. So you're always going to want to position your infantry behind your archers unless you are on a very steep hill in which case 
you can put the infantry at the bottom of the hill. However, if you put them at the bottom of the hill and there's a bit of a distance between them and your archers, you may find that you get cavalry charged because cavalry always aims for your archers. So it's actually usually better to tell our infantry to sit behind our archers in a so they can respond to any attacks of oncoming enemies. What I then do is I press F3 to change their formation and then I press F2 to put them in a shield wall formation. Now essentially what this does is, is my archers are going to be shooting the enemies as they come towards us and the enemy archers are going to be trying to shoot us as well. So all of my infantry are now defended behind their shields. Yes, some of my own archers will take some damage, but it doesn't really matter too much to be honest because they're trying to shoot the enemy back as well and it's better they have full vision. And this is essentially going to be my setup of every single battle that I use my archers and infantry together. And then as soon as the enemies come close, what I will then do is I'll get my infantry like so and I will tell them to move forward and we can tell them if we like to move forward in a line to truly defend our archers um, from oncoming attacks. And because our archers are on a hill, they're still going to be shooting over their heads at the enemy. And when the enemies get close, we can just press F1, command them to charge with F3 like so and they will go and attack the enemy. But um, you don't want them running off into the distance and abandoning your archers because otherwise your archers will just be, you know, running around like headless chickens and doing no damage. So your infantry are there to support the archers. And now I'm going to be explaining how this actually works in a battle scenario. So let's jump into a actual battle. With my army of 91 versus 203 soldiers and I'm going to be showing you how you can still win against Nadia, the leader of the Western Empire. As you can see, we are well outnumbered here, but I kind of just want to demonstrate. I'll be showing you guys four different examples with varying different troops. But the first thing you need to do when you spawn is look around for a steep hill or a tree line to position your men on or within. Command your archers specifically by pressing number two on your keyboard and then press F3, F3 to put them in a loose formation on top of a hill. The steeper, the better. You want to make sure they're in a thin line across the hill so each man actually has visibility of the enemy. Then command your infantry to stand behind them in a shield wall by pressing number one to command them and then F3 for formation and F2 to select shield wall. This will stop them getting hammered by the enemy archers and allow them to all be well and healthy so they can provide a counter charge as soon as the enemy closes in towards us. You can press the ALT key on your keyboard to highlight where the enemy is to make sure they're not flanking you. Now just sit here and let your archers rain down death upon your enemy as they advance to lower their morale. And note that if you are outnumbered like this the enemy AI will always attack you so you don't need to come towards them. Just wait until the enemy infantry comes close to you before you allow your warriors to charge down the hill towards them. You can see on this hill my archers have full visibility even though they can no longer fire through my wall of troops. They can still fire over their head. The enemy morale will be low at this point and as you can see their infantry is going to start running away from my warriors. The enemy's cavalry however is distracting my archers and proving to be a bit of a nuisance. This is to be expected, though it's more important however that your archers remain in loose formation instead of skirmishing around away from the enemy cavalry because otherwise they'll be doing less damage. At this point I am regrouping my infantry and telling them to clean up. I don't really want my infantry charging after retreating enemies though since all my archers would then probably die and be very vulnerable to attack. As you can see this was enough to absolutely destroy the enemy army. Please note though that I'm using seasoned well armoured warriors for this example but I will be moving on to lesser novice troops later on so don't worry. But as you can see we only lost 5 men and 4 were wounded in comparison to the enemy army which lost hundreds. And this is on realistic difficulty and that is simply the power 
of this tactic. In this next example, Arthur, it's move. quite funny, really. We have the power Stand of a apart. river. Whenever you have a river or a lake Water like this, you can just position your archers in loose formation along the banks in a very long line to literally destroy anybody trying to cross the river. Any Every infantry time. are pro more any infantry are more than likely to retreat instead of face this absolute killing field. We will however keep our infantry in reserve once again in a shield wall formation behind our archers. As you can see the enemy army is making its way across the river and they are getting absolutely destroyed. They just have to walk so slowly through that water they really can't do anything about it. Now one option you have and I'm going to show you guys this as an example is you can tell your archers to advance and then essentially they will just maintain firing range between themselves and the enemy. Uh, same if you tell them to fall back, they will do so prioritizing falling back all the time. However, what I've realized is that they spend more time running around and skirmishing than actually doing damage. So it's actually a lot more effective to just keep them in a loose formation. And also, if you keep your cavalry in your shield wall and any enemy cavalry charge you, they will just get absolutely obliterated because, you know, the thick line of your three-man shield wall should slow down their horses. And we can see at the back here, our archers are running around in the distance skirmishing because that's what I told them to do by advancing and falling back. And they end up just doing no damage. But this is still a good method of keeping your archers safe. Especially since we are using Fian archers. And they have the one of the highest athletic skill in the game. Of 220 I believe. Which means they can run away from pretty much everyone. And shoot them when they gain the ability to do so. So what you'll find is that you'll keep your archers safe. And they'll be able to run rings around the enemy. Usually this can be quite a good tactic if you have an elite archer unit. However, as I'll show you in a moment, it doesn't work with lesser archer units that aren't very well armoured because they'll be so vulnerable to cavalry and melee units who will overrun them. So as you guys can see, the enemies are retreating across the river and they're just getting absolutely slaughtered. Now I'm going to be showing you an example against the exact same army but using less experienced soldiers who don't have as much armour and therefore they will be more vulnerable to death. So this next example is what happens if you tell your archers to skirmish by advancing or retreating, but they have a low athletic skill. Now we're against the exact same army here, we just have lesser troops. And the main issue with this method is that if you're not using archers with a high athletic skill, the enemy's army will soon catch up. Now what you're going to notice is that my archers, while they're falling back and skirmishing, are going to be doing a lot a lot less damage than if they just stood there and shot at the enemy. And I'm keeping my warriors behind the archers so the archers still have visibility and can take their pot shots while falling back. So you're basically losing a lot of ground using this method because of your archers' bad athletic skill. The enemy army is still going to catch them up before they've done enough damage that your warriors can then go in and charge. So this method is fantastic if you have a big army that can actually utilize it. However, because the enemy army outnumbers us by double, it's just not a method that works as well as, you know, standing on the spot, doing as much damage as possible to lower the enemy's morale and then charging in to destroy their morale and making them retreat. So I'm making a last stand now on the hill and we haven't killed enough of the enemy army that, you know, we're actually going to be able to win this. The enemy army's infantry is pushing through my infantry and now they're attacking my archers. And there's not really anything I can do to recover from this now. So I just wanted to show you how much this tactic can really fail. What I'm going to show you after this is going back to my original tactic of standing my ground on the spot and lower, lowering the enemy's morale and then charging them after we've done enough damage. And I'll show you with the exact same forces against the exact same army how much better that tactic works. And once again, we're on realistic difficulty here. You can see we're getting demolished. You know, we did a lot less damage to the enemy. We still did a lot of damage, but you know, we died and we lost the battle. So in my books, that isn't very good. 
So this is the exact same army, but this time I'm going to turn around. I'm going to get up this hill that exists right at the back of the map because I really want to make it as hard as possible for any cavalry to get a decent charge off on me. And I want to get the high ground for my infantry to charge down towards the enemy. And I'm just going to put my uh, Sturgeon Shield Warriors behind my um, hunters and um, just hope for the best now as the army advances over the plain field. I have got three followers and I just told them to do their own thing. Um, so we're just waiting for the enemy army to come into range here and you'll see the kill feed start to light up as um, they attack. Making sure my warriors are not in the way of my archers and I want like a nice even wall of shield warriors so when I do do that counter charge I can kind of make a wall of defense for my archers to carry on laying out the damage. So you can see here we're starting to get a few kills they're coming in quite quickly now as the enemy progresses towards us they're charging up a gentle hill and I'm going to now charge in my infantry towards the enemy. And I'm going to tell them to get, you know, right across the enemy lines and just make a defensive shield wall before telling them to charge. Some of my archers have gone into battle. I'm going to tell the rest to stand there and just, you know, carry on taking pot shots where they can at the enemy infantry. But you can see some of the enemy infantry on the right there already was retreating. Um, and I'm going to have to start doing some work here at taking out the enemy cavalry to keep my archers alive. Uh, my warriors are doing a good job at wiping out the infantry because they had such low morale. Many of them retreated because of the damage that my archers did because their archers, my archers were standing still so they could do that damage. And now my warriors are able to, you know, finish off those enemy infantries and then run towards the enemy archers. Though many have died in the process. So what I have essentially left is my archers against the enemy cavalry. So I'm just helping my archers clean up the cavalry uh, though they are doing a lot of the damage themselves and I'm just staying back from the enemy archers I know the enemy has less archers than me but I can kind of run into them distract them a little bit but ideally not get hit and just focus on killing the enemy cavalry but once again just avoiding the enemy cavalry um, pikes because they will take me out in one hit and of course if I can take out the enemy general that's going to really lower their morale by a chunk so I'm focusing on doing that as well myself. If I had my own cavalry, I'd be able to lead a lot more counter charges. And in future episodes, I will explain exactly how you can do that to great effect. But I kind of wanted to just talk about infantry and archers and, you know, how you can maximize your damage with that sort of combination as it is currently. So as you guys can see, um, the Empire are currently still winning this battle um, with my low end troops. But, um, you know, we're taking out these cavalry guys and my archers are definitely strong enough to whittle them down still. Even the enemy general that only remains now is just getting destroyed by my archers. I'm laying a couple of shots on her myself to make sure she goes down, but that's about it. You can see the Empire's forces have been diminished and we have won this battle against the greater odds. So, you know, it's very possible to do this technique even when the enemy army outnumbers you by double and still come across even with you know less experienced troops i just wanted to show you that and you can see i've taken a lot more wounded men a lot more um dead men in fact many of my warriors were either dead or wounded uh, only the archers actually survived from this battle but we can see we can still took on their entire army and came out victorious and that's the power of this technique give the video a like if you enjoyed it guys i hope it was helpful so obviously currently we're doing everything on realistic difficulty but i've had some people previously say that um i'm actually doing on easy difficulty so i just wanted to show you for the sake of uh, argument what easy difficulty looks like then we'll get them to charge in a moment but as you can see i mean my arch is actually a lot more accurate on easy difficulty and we're going to tell my men to charge in now we don't even need to like i wanted to see how long we could delay it but my god the enemy infantry is already running away and retreating there's just a few cav that the empire has left yeah as you guys can see we have not lost a single person and they've lost 111 people and 45 are wounded and 
a lot of their army actually retreated, uh, which is quite funny. But oh, you guys can't see once it. There you go, now you guys can see that most of the army actually retreated and that's like the difference playing on easy difficulty, like it's just really easy. Now the last thing to mention is your warrior to archer ratio. Now what I usually do is go six archers for every four warriors with shields. So as you guys can see I've got 40 shield warriors and 60 archers uh, that we just used there. And um, I would usually go for more archers because they're all of your damage that you're going to be doing. Whereas the only point of the shield wall is to protect your archers and let them keep on doing damage. You also find the archers a lot easier to level than the shield warriors because the shield warriors are going to be the guys that die most of the time. Maximum, in my opinion, go for 70 archers to 30 shield warriors. Um, and you'll probably find you can deal with most threats before they can actually reach you uh, by using that combination. However, when you start to like fight people with cavalry and other things like that, there are different techniques you can use. And I'll talk about that in future videos. So if you guys are interested in learning more about how to use your own cavalry, how to defend from cavalry and so on, um, check out my other videos linked in the description below. But I just want to say thanks so much for watching. Thanks for the likes on the video. And I really do hope you found this helpful, uh, this little banner lord guide video and if you want to follow along for future videos just subscribe and press the bell icon then youtube will let you know as soon as the next one comes out but thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next video have a great day and goodbye